Hey, what's up guys? This is DJ Lefebvre here with my first tutorial on how you can get uh, phone calls through Virtual DJ or really any other application that you use to record. Um, I just happen to use Virtual DJ right now, but the same steps I'm going to show you today show you how you can take phone calls from, from Google Voice or from Skype or any other interactive channel that you have on your computer and you can broadcast them live with no echo in the in no delay it's really really simple and all it takes is a couple of easy things uh, the first one that you're going to need is a virtual audio cable to get this thing going uh, good news is that you can get that for freezies um, all you have to do is go to uh, vb-audio.com and they have a virtual audio software that you can download right there. So just go to vb-audio.com slash cable and then download the install VB cable driver. Uh, and that's that's your first step. So that's step number one, right? So now that you've got this driver installed, what do you got to do next? Well, the virtual audio cable works as any other routing cable would normally work. Um, so for instance, the first thing you're going to do here is open up your audio settings. And in your audio settings, you'll notice that underneath here at the bottom, I have two inputs, line in one and line in two. Line in one is my virtual audio cable that I'm currently using, and I have it assigned to channel one, mono. Uh, in order to assign an, a line input, all you have to do is click this plus button right here, and then you can click the down button and click in line in one. You can have uh, as many as you'd like. You can make this one line in three, for example. Uh, but we're just going to go with the two in this example for right now. Now, I have two because it's very important. You have to also have a line in for your voice in order for it to, well, for what I use it for, and that's to see an actual wavelength on your screen as you are broadcasting. So you have line in two, which I use as my Zoom H4n. And then line in one I have is my virtual audio cable right here. And those are both sent to my master out, which is channels one and two. So now we've got steps one, we have the cable. Step two, internally our cable is routed. Step three, open up your Google Voice app. Now in Google Voice, you'll see that you have a couple different options for um, under here underneath the settings. So what you want to do is your microphone be set to whatever internal microphone you're using. Right now I'm using my Zoom H4n as an audio interface. But the important part here is speakers. You want your speakers to be changed to your virtual audio cable that you have. I personally have four of them because I use it for different routing for different applications when I'm online. So in Google Voice, you're going to see this for speakers. And I'm going to click test real quick. Ready? Test. And you'll notice that you didn't hear any sound at all. Why is that? Well, very simple. We did not have it enabled within our program to play on deck one. So you go to these custom buttons right here. I'm on the professional pad layout. That's the default third layout. I believe you can choose from up, down, up right here. Click on pro. And then all you have to do is right click on a button. And then on the button, this is the most scripting you have to do. Very, very simple. Just deck one, line in one. What that does is it, it says, all right, so for deck one over here on the left, I'm going to make line in one go to there. And then for the host, which is me, I make it deck two, line in two. In order for me to hear the volume now, I have to click on that and enable it. And now you see that deck 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 one is playing. So bring it back to over here. We're going to take our, our test audio. And now I'm going to click test. And you'll hear it. And you'll also see it up top of the screen. There you go. It takes a little second to normalize. So again, you see the two different colors displaying in my wavelength bar. One more time. And what that represents is the same as somebody else who was on the line talking to you. So you've got that, you've got that, you've got that. Now for the audio portion, in order to be able to hear this, both of these on your end for monitoring, you have to make sure that the headphones are selected. The proper headphones are on. That way you're hearing it all. Occasionally I will go with the four deck mode and with the four deck mode, you have to select this as the other option. So these two headphones on the left, if you want to be able to hear it. Now, the same thing holds true for Skype. So in Skype, all you have to do is go to audio and video, scroll down to the speakers. You'll see that the, my mic is, is assigned right to them right there. So my mic is already working directly to my end user. And then for speakers, we're going to select from the drop down our virtual audio cable. And I'm going to let you know this is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
So you saw it coming through there in the wavelength bar. Now, interesting enough, if I turn off this host button right here, it's and there you go. I was talking, but you couldn't hear anything because what it's actually doing is it's it's routing line one and line two, my two decks, out to the master. The final thing that I like to do with this setup is under the video tab, first thing you have to do is make sure transitions are turned off. So right now they're, 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 they're off. And then go to your video effects. And then from here, I'm going to select a shader. Where's my shader? Oh, see, I told you, you got to turn transitions off. Transitions are off. Now I come over here, find my shader. There's my shader. So now when I'm talking, it, picture a blank screen or wherever else you really want to put this on the screen. Now you have your audio showing visually. So you don't even need to have a, a video view up there and you can have two guests coming back and forth. So I'm going to be quiet for a second and I'll play the Skype audio and you can see how that, that looks. So very simple, it's uh, all you need is the virtual audio cable and then make sure that you just route it correctly from your speaker out within whatever program you're gonna use it in. Now, additionally, you can use programs such as Audacity to record uh, the end portion of your conversation from somebody. The same thing holds true here. What you're gonna do is your, your line in right here, you're just gonna select the virtual audio cable. So now when I press record, on this track and I play my Skype, you'll see that it comes through as an audio signal. So whether you're going to use um, Audacity or uh, Adobe Audition, uh, it all holds true, all the same, um, and then you're going to get your audio in. So there is no echo feedback. Um, the only delay you'll have is whatever delay you would normally see with a voice over IP solution. And I hope that that tip is helpful for you guys. If you enjoy it, like and subscribe. I'll be coming out with a whole bunch more of these because uh, I like to do a lot of uh, video editing or video broadcasting through Facebook Live and YouTube Live using vi Virtual DJ and using um, Telemedia as well as uh, televisuals, which are two very, very powerful tools. And I'll have some, some good tips for you right there. So that's it for today. Once again, this is DJ Lefebvre, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.